Hi, my name is Don Berg. Welcome to my Nurturing Educational Policy video series. I've been an educator for over 20 years, and I want to talk about how education policy affects nurturing in schools. But you probably don't want to hear about it because you have other questions on your mind, like how do we solve our dropout problem? And when students show up, how do we get them to achieve? And when students do achieve, how do we ensure that they attain true mastery? I figure these issues are on your mind because that list includes public enemies number one and two right now. The third one may not be on your mind because even most educators don't recognize it as a problem. But I propose that all three of the problems are not only interrelated, but they're all symptoms of a single underlying problem that's rooted in educational policy and will only be solved after a different kind of policy framework is in place. Since the mastery issue is probably not familiar to you, let me tell you about my experience with Mr. Schuster, sophomore year of high school math in 1985. I faithfully jumped through all the hoops Mr. Schuster put in front of me. I scored reasonably well in his tests, and he gave me perfectly acceptable grades. And you should know, I was attending a college prep magnet program, and I was in class with the very best students in the Long Beach Unified School District. We were expected to be engaged and accomplished learners. But in reality, me and a good number of my classmates were accomplished at gaming the system, at being faux achievers. Now, flash forward to the beginning of my junior year of math. When I took the assessment of skills at the beginning of the year, I failed so utterly and completely that my new math teacher saw no hope of my catching up, so assigned me independent study working on SAT preparation manuals for the entire semester so I could retake that test in December. She told me that she knew I could master the strategies for taking the test because my performance in Mr. Schuster's class proved that I had the ability to go through the motions without mastering the material. And my performance on the SAT in turn proved that she was correct because my math scores went up 120 points, going from 500 to 620, while my English score went up only 50 points from 560 to 610. She recognized that I was a successful faux achiever, though she didn't have that term. I wasn't underachieving and I wasn't overachieving. I wasn't even run-of-the-mill achieving. I was faux achieving, doing enough to look good on the terms set by the system, but not in a way that would get me the learning benefits that are normally expected. As a faux achiever, I knew how to do the minimal amount of work to get what I wanted from the system. And I am certainly not unique. Howard Gardner, of Multiple Intelligences fame, pointed out in his 2004 book, The Unschooled Mind, that the majority of people with advanced degrees in every subject are prone to failing practical tests of the most basic concepts in their fields when the problems are presented to them in ways that are different from how they were normally tested in schools. So, if they don't get the problem presented to them in a way that they expect, then they cannot solve the problem. In other words, most master's degrees do not indicate mastery, they indicate faux achievement. In my next video, I will explain the psychology behind faux achievement and point out the real underlying problem in our education system today.